Hello everyone and welcome to my tech talk today, uh, session number VMTN665U, remember that number. Uh, leveraging user environment manager to remove group policies. So I am Nigel Hickey, I'm VCIX for uh, Horizon, uh, as well as a VCAP for Horizon 7, and I work for Sigma Solutions out of Houston, Texas. So here's our disclaimer from VMware. Seen that before today? So let's start off with uh, Twitter. Uh, I'm a big Twitter fan, so make sure you follow me. Make sure you follow V Brownback putting on this show. They've done a great event every year. Uh, I try to be involved as much as possible, so keep up with them on Twitter. If you're hashtagging, please use the hashtag for this session. Again, that's why I want you to remember that number. Quickly write that down, 6654U, ready to go. All right, so what is User Environment Manager? Explained by VMware, User Environment Manager is a powerful tool, a scalable solution engineered for Workspace productivity while delivering day-to-day -day cost effectiveness for operations. So what that also means is they have a dynamic policy configuration tool now that's a coupled from what used to be persona management. And what that does is allow you to keep those settings uh, consistent across the board if that's virtual, physical, uh, or cloud workloads. And the workloads we're talking about are desktop for VDI. So in my experience with UAM, it's very intimidating. It's one of those programs when you open it up, there's a thousand settings and you get kind of carried away and not sure what to take care of first, second, or third. So I like to focus on just one setting, one issue, maybe one problem, start there small and tackle that one problem and then learn the application. It is very easy to install and very small, but it's super cumbersome, lots of settings. It works on the concept of managing the persona and keeping that consistent across devices, like I said. Um, I don't like to really talk about this, but yes, it can be leveraged with Citrix. Um, Citrix Zen Desktop, uh, Zen App, and RDSH environments, uh, as well as it's packaged uh, as a standalone product, as well as with Horizon 7 and VMware uh, Workspace, or excuse me, Workspace ONE. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump into talking about how we can leverage User Environment Manager, or UEM, uh, to be the interface for group policies. So the ADMX templates that we're all familiar with can be loaded into your UEM environment, and those will allow you to manage the settings that you possibly were using for group policies prior to using this tool. And we all know the more group policies we have at logon, the longer the logins can possibly be. So this will help reduce that size of the group policy logon at the beginning of the user's experience. So instead of having multiple tools, you can have one you know, single pane of glass, I guess we can call it, we all hate that word, right? To manage all of your settings, if it's user environmental settings or if it's group policy settings. There's also a great feature here, uh, if you've ever done group policy and you can never find that setting, there's a cool setting in here where you can show what's already pre-configured, get right to the problem, solve the problem quickly instead of searching through tons and tons of lines of code to figure out where in that group policy you have to make that change. So to get started, where do we get this from? So when you download the installation package for uh, User Environment Manager, there's uh, the set of tools that come with it. It has its own folder for ADMX. You're basically going to take that folder and open it up, and inside there you're going to have your ADMX policies, as well as your language folder, which is very important. Pay attention to your language folder. Make sure you copy what's in your language folder as well as your folder outside of that. Missing some of those will have your group policy as well as parts of UEM not function as expected. And then you're gonna copy all those into your Active Directory structure, the policy definition folders that we're familiar with. Once your policies are in there, then it can be activated in User Environment Manager. So here's our traditional group policy screen. This is from my lab at home. So we have some policies for mapping a printer, block and control panel. Um, we're going to leverage today kind of going through blocking control panel and how that process works. So we don't have time for a demo, but I'll walk you through the steps of creating that policy. So user environment manager does rely on group policy to start. It has one group policy you can start with and whatever OU that group policy is tied to, your desktops that are in there, the user settings will follow that user as they're in and out of there. So when you're building Horizon, Horizon desktops, anyone that's in there is getting that settings for the user environment manager and that's getting checked in and out as log in and log off happens. So prior to loading this screen here, there's one screen that I kind of miss I want to talk about real quickly. The manage templates button on the side there on the right. 
When you click on that screen, that's where you can see all of your ADMX templates that are in Active Directory because you're already pointing at your default policy definition folder. And then from there, you can break apart which ones are user-based and which ones are computer-based. Because this is user-based, you're going to get an alert on the, on the computer-based ones and you'll be able to manage those and delete them so you don't have to deal with seeing them because we're only caring about the user settings here. So to get started, we're going to create and open up our screen. We'll be able to create a policy, give it a name, and from there we can add labels and tags for other things like conditional settings later on that you may get into, where you can have a setting that only triggers based off of an IP range, a setting that says only apply to Windows 10 or Windows 7 desktops, or only apply to an RDSH server. So we're not going to get into too much of conditions, but from this main screen you can do a lot of stuff, and it looks very basic. So when you're setting that up, this is it. You're done. You're, you're, your policy's set, and you're like, okay, what do I do next? So we're going to jump into select categories at the bottom, and this will bring up what it sees in your ADMX area of Active Directory. So any ADMX templates that are loaded in there, if you need more, like your office templates, you'll load them in there, they'll show up. So today we're going to do control panel. So we check on control panel, that'll preload that ADMX template into user environment manager. And then we're back at the screen here and we'll notice that at the top, no policy settings are configured but we have seven categories selected based off of what we selected on that prior screen. From here, we're gonna click on Edit Policies. And that's gonna bring up a screen that we're all pretty much familiar with. It looks like Active Directory's group policy screen, similar. And from here, it's gonna just preload what we asked it to preload from the control panel. And today, we're interested in prohibiting the control panel access for the end users, so we're just gonna double click on that, and that's gonna bring up another screen that looks like our group policy screen that we've grown up to love and hate. We're going to enable that. And then back to our next screen, it's enabled. So now UEM knows it's enabled. And we can move on to the next configuration of seeing the screen of what is set up. So now we have a control panel setting prohibiting access to the control panel for any user that logs in. If their virtual desktop is in that folder where their UEM configuration is tied to, they're not going to be able to see the control panel and log in log off, log out back on, all of your ADMX stuff that you had done in group policy is now just done in Active Directory and now you can go delete that group policy and it never has to loop back or log in with the user. You're done at this screen here, you're basically seeing the user settings for ADMX and you're going to have multiple templates, multiple policies set up in there. The next thing that I want to talk about was back to conditions. Conditions are super helpful for things like this. You may not want to drop this on an executive, or you may not want to drop this on the IT guys. If they're using VDI, you can have those conditions in there. Only apply to users in this Active Directory security group. So then we'll throw in the call center that we want to lock down, or we'll throw in the help desk that's okay to lock down. But we don't want to lock down everyone. So we can still manage the granularity that we would in the group policy through all of the active, um, excuse me, the UEM settings, but kind of at a different stance or like more powerful screen. So I know I kind of ran through this really quickly, but it is fairly simple to set these up. And once the person logs in, that policy is active now. So it's the same as group policy, turned on, set it, it's ready to go. I like to say that you're easily going to save like 30 minutes. I mean, you know, going back and forth the screens is hard. Being in one place, especially in the VDI environment now, we want to have one tool or one operation that we can manage. So I like to say 30 to 90 minutes gives you that one to three weeks off that you can play PlayStation, figure something else out. Um, sorry, that's a work from home joke. Um, <laughs> so it's just, it's, it's more of a complete solution, I believe. If you can rip those group policies out of the environment, you're gonna do better. I had a customer once, uh, had 40 group policies, VDI, and we put in uh, UEM, we were able to get them down to 10 group policies. They were blocking applications, they were mapping printers, they were mapping drives, all of group policy, and it was extending the login time for all their users, and we're looking at a two or three minute login time that we're able to get down to under 40 seconds, so. And that's about it all I have today. Follow me on Twitter, keep up with uh, me on my blog, and also I'm on LinkedIn. I'm part of the EUC Champions team, so you may see me in some other sessions later today. If you have any questions or want to talk about this in a little bit more depth, um, I have a blog series that's going to be coming out just on UEM and a little more deeper screenshot how to step-by-step. -step. 
And that's it for today. Thank you, Brief Round Rag, and thank you, VMware.